about the uh, the impounding numbers, uh, 744 vehicles since the 1st of July, uh, is that a large majority of these vehicles being seized are for offences that are directly aligned to uh, the lives lost or the reasons why people are losing their lives uh, on our roads in South Australia. So 66 lives lost so far this year in comparison to 61 last year. If you have a look at the impounding figures, there's well over 200 people um, who've had their vehicles impounded for drink driving. Um, that's 21% of the lives lost on our roads this year. The contributing factor has been through drink driving. So that's incredibly disappointing when you, when you actually think that the messaging is so clear, uh, the reasons that we put out there all the time about you know, why road safety is so important, um, what impact drink driving has on people's driving ability, and yet we still have well over 200 vehicles inside two months uh, that have been impounded because people were caught drink driving. And there's a further cohort of people who actually refused uh, to participate in a breath analysis, who have also had their vehicles impounded. So when you start to look at the impact of um, the lives lost and serious injuries on our roads this year, a lot of the vehicles that have been impounded in the last two months uh, have been for offences that we know kill people on our roads and seriously injure them. Um, it's also really disappointing that 50% of the people who have had their vehicles impounded in the last two months have actually had a vehicle impounded previously. Now, this was prior to this legislation uh, being introduced and the fees being paid up front before getting your vehicle back. So hopefully this is now a more stark reminder. People are held more to account. The penalties are harsher. Uh, and I would certainly hope that those uh, frequent flyers that bring their vehicles back into the impound yard uh, won't be doing that again, uh, but there will be serious consequences for those people who continue to drive poorly on our roads. Given, you know, as you said, people are losing their lives due to dangerous driving and these offences that are putting their vehicles um, in the impound, do you think that the new penalties are enough to deter people from you know, offending and repeat offending? Uh, look, there's different cohorts of people on our roads who are responsible for um, losing their lives or, or, or killing other people on our roads or seriously injuring other people on our roads. You know, I think in some cases there are people who make genuine mistakes. Um, they have a momentary lapse of concentration or something similar. And I think everyone can actually relate to that. But then there are people who make deliberate choices you know, to do stupid things on our roads. You know, they drive at high speed, now, hoon driving, as you mentioned before, drink and drug driving, um, not wearing a seatbelt. You know, all these types of behaviours are, are clearly preventable. And that's the type of people that we're really trying to focus on here. I think if, if you've got a first time drink driver who has their vehicle impounded and loses their licence for a period of time, this is a significant penalty for them, as it is for anybody else. And we would certainly hope that the vast majority of people um, would actually learn a lesson the first time. And I think in some ways be thankful that um, they've actually got away with, if you like, a fine and having their vehicle taken away from them for a while, rather than having a lifelong injury requiring care, or rather than having killed a loved one or, or uh, another innocent road user. So you know, in some ways, I think people who actually get caught need to count themselves lucky. People, a lot of these people have been actually been disqualified from driving. Do we need to look at a high penalty for that? And that doesn't seem to be deterring yeah, but people who've already lost their licence, I think, uh, fit into that category uh, where they're making a deliberate choice to, um, to flout the law. Um, we do have um, processes in place where we actually keep an eye on those people um, and make sure that they are actually uh, abiding by the law and not driving when they're supposed to. But clearly there's a large cohort of people out there as well who continue to drive whilst they're disqualified. As you can see uh, from the figures, um, we make sure that uh, those people are held to account. And again, these uh, laws have been in place for two months. Uh, in the past, sometimes uh, offenders may have actually avoided um, paying the costs which would have been attributed to the court, whereas now that penalty is up front. So, you know, they may have actually thought, well, I can sort of get away with not paying a fine previously, whereas now you actually can't get your car back until you've paid your fine. So we're hoping that that actually sends a stronger message to those types of drivers and that the impact is immediate it's commensurate with the behaviour that they've actually shown on the roads and hopefully it's going to have an impact on them not coming back again. How would you describe some of these, some of these that are listed for behaviour? So street racing, some over 45 k's per hour over the limit, some unlicensed, um, some who refuse blood alcohol analysis with a child in their car, some driving dangerously to escape police. How would you describe some of these behaviour on our roads? Yeah, um, 
I'm, I cease to be amazed really in terms of some of the things I hear and see about what people are doing in their cars, on the roads, particularly when they've got um, innocent um, passengers in the car. Um, one of the things that makes my blood boil is when you hear about drink drivers with, uh, with kids in the car. Those, those kids have got no say you know, in, in their safety and no say in what's going on in control of the vehicle. And the people who actually do that are completely irresponsible. Um, Toon drivers, um, it's like a badge of honour in some regard to do a great big burnout and all that sort of stuff. But we've seen cars going into fences, into houses, into posts. We've seen people being killed and seriously injured as a result of that behaviour. It's, it's not a badge of honour, it's just blatant, stupid driving behaviour and it's killing people and seriously injuring people on our roads. Do you think that those repeat offenders, considering there's been a lot said about how dangerous it is, people could die out of this situation, do you think that um, for repeat offenders, being able to pay their way out of it is enough of a deterrent or would you uh, and the police like to see these cars being removed because I would think that that's much more of a deterrent for these people and their behaviour? Uh, look, I think everyone deserves a second chance, and like I say, this, this, this legislation, yeah, this legislation's only been in for a couple of months, um, so that the fine's up front, and so this is their this is their last second chance, basically, where they've got that uh, that fine to pay, which hopefully really hits them in the hip pocket, makes them think twice about what they're doing on the roads, um, and there is other legislation in place which actually can address um, some of the driving behaviours, but I think it is a frustration that we share that there is a small cohort of people out on the road. Um, who continue to do the wrong thing. Um, you know, we, we need to continue to work out how we can actually make it more and more difficult for those people to continue that driving behaviour and as often as possible, remove them from the road. So just um, you know, in theory, could someone offend, pay this $1,000 plus dollar fine, get their car back, then offend again and just keep paying the fine or is there a limit at which they can, they're no longer allowed to get their car back? Um, so in the first place, uh, you know, it's a, a, a massive fine, you know, well over $1,000 for um, having a vehicle impounded. Uh, theoretically, um, a person could have been in a situation where they continue to pay out $1,000 uh, every 28 days to get their vehicle back. Um, if that's the way they think that that's the best use of their money, then um, I guess that's a personal choice for them to make. But at some point, you know, we will be clamping down on those people tighter and tighter and tighter until such time as um, their ability to actually engage in that behaviour on an ongoing basis um, is almost null and void. So the people that are repeat offenders are targeted by us on a very regular basis um, so that we can remove them from the road time and time again. And if they choose to do that, then they'll probably be without their vehicle more than they will be with their vehicle. Um, what about the, um, what, the exemptions that allow people to um, get their car back on a hardship ground, what does hardship grounds entail? Uh, yeah, so hardship grounds um, is a as a case by case um, basis or application by an individual to um, say polls for us to have a look at what their personal circumstances are um, and what the impact of having the vehicle impounded for the full time um, entails. So there is uh, there's no one um, uh, defined solution in relation to that. Um, we genuinely take it on a case by case basis because people do have different circumstances that need to be taken into account. But it would for repeat offenders or for people who've been you know, evading police, driving, engaging in a high speed pursuit, that kind of thing, or do they get, are they able to apply for an exemption as well? Yeah, so there's some cases where um, if the vehicle's been used without the owner's consent, either it's been stolen or it might be a, a relative or family member that's taken the vehicle that's, say, been engaged in hoon driving behaviour and the vehicle's subsequently been impounded. Um, there are applications uh, for those types of circumstances. Uh, but certainly the, uh, the hardship application uh, refers to the, the person's personal circumstances um, which uh, we can take into account um, the actual offending at the time in terms of um, what impact that does or does not have in that application or that assessment. Thank you. We'll just ask a quick question. Um, there was a, an incident at Port Augusta Prison um, where a couple were, were caught shooting drugs into to the compound. Have police noticed there's been an increase in contraband at our prison or attempts to get contraband in? Uh, so we haven't noticed uh, an, uh, an increase in this as yet. Um, what we do know is at 5.30 uh, p.m. on Monday night, uh, a vehicle was uh, seen driving around the vicinity of the Port Augusta prison. Uh, we understand and we'll allege that uh, a male person has got a compound bow out of the vehicle and fired uh, at least one arrow uh, into the prison complex uh, can, um, attached to a package. Uh, that package is being analysed at the moment. 
Uh, so a 32-year-old male uh, from the Adelaide metropolitan area has been arrested um, at the scene. Uh, the vehicle uh, took off and was located by police not too far away. And a 35-year-old male and a 31-year-old female, also from the Adelaide metropolitan area, have all been arrested. Um, what's important to know is that uh, in June this year, the legislation was changed that if uh, there is a buffer zone around correctional facilities of 100 metres, anyone who's uh, found guilty of an offence of introducing contraband into a prison uh, and within that 100, um, 100 metre buffer zone uh, is liable to a maximum penalty of 10 years in prison. So we've really ramped up the, uh, the penalties again associated with trying to introduce uh, drugs into prison. So I think in the past we've, we've had uh, instances where there's been tennis balls and tennis rackets you know, used to, to hit things over the fence. In this case, as I said, it was a, a compound bow which was used to, to fire an arrow over into the, uh, into the prison grounds. And unclear whether it was drugs or what? Yeah, the packages have been seized uh, and so they'll be forensically examined and we'll determine exactly what it was that uh, they were trying to introduce. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.